Hm. Okay, I think we are live. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Employee to Entrepreneur Society. We are here for another week, and I am so excited because I love this time of the week when we get to talk to an employee. So I'm Kim Speed. I'm the host of the group. I am a fellow entrepreneur. I'm a brand visibility expert and business mentor to small business owners. And I love to bring guests on that can help us to be inspired, to be motivated, and to help us grow our business. And today, I have a super guest who is going to do just that. So I have Katrina Sawe, and she is the CEO and founder of Jumpstart Your Biz Now, and jump, jumpstartyourbiznow.com, and jumpstartpublishing.net. No known as the jumpstart your biz coach she kicks your <laughs> kicks her clients into high gear making more money doing what they love and fast i love that katrina is the creator of the jumpstart your marketing and sales system 10 times international best selling author with 17 although we we think it might be 18 now <laughs> books including love yourself successful Jumpstart Your New Business Now and jump and the Jumpstart Your Blank series. She's the founder of the International Speaker Network, a free educational networking group um, with thousands of members. She's been featured on the Oprah and Friends, XM Radio Network, ABC, the LA Tribu Tribune, and the CW. So I am so excited to have you here, Katrina. Thank you so much for being here with me. Thanks, Kim. It's fun. I love to talk to people and inspire them about getting out of the job and getting into entrepreneurship. And that's where we're <laughs> going to talk. That's where we're going to start. So tell us how you got started in your business. Okay. So I told my boss <laughs> to F off and walked out the door. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my Fabulous. Last... <laughs> Well, it was, he, he needed it. Trust me. Like he was one of those that would say one thing and do the other just to make himself look good with his boss. And meanwhile, we're myself and my other, the other marketing director at the company were struggling because we needed another person. Oh, you guys can handle it. You know, I'm like, we'd be working 70 hours a week and, you know, uh, anyway, so thanks so much. <laughs> he deserved it. And, uh, it was very satisfying. And yes, I did think before I said it that, do I need this bridge or can I burn it? <laughs> like, <laughs> and, uh, and I just leapt out into entrepreneurship. Now I had some ducks in a row first, but, um, and we can talk about those. So it wasn't too willy nilly, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it wasn't that crazy, but it was a little crazy. It That's was. A, Most people so, wouldn't do that. <laughs> right. So you were working for a company as a marketing um, uh, person in the marketing department. Um, so, so what did you set up before you told them you right. were leaving? <laughs> right. <this> so <laughs> um, the job where I, that I really loved was in advertising sales for the local newspaper here in Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's where I met all the entrepreneurs and the business owners who I was like, oh my God, I need to help you because you're doing this, but you don't know about this. And you're doing that, but you're not doing this. And that's right. why they're going out of business. And so I'm like, I can help them. So then I went to work for one of my advertisers, which was this company that I was selling you. And I was only there for six months, but during that time, I wasn't being supported, right? So I was seeking other things. And I had known that I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I did seek a business coach during that six months of working with that last company. Um, and I think we worked together for like three months. I can't remember, but she had me do some like skills set testing and like, what are you really good at? And it turned out I was really good at problem solving. Right. But I had come to her and I said, okay, so I want to start a business, but do I do marketing consulting because that's what I know? Or do I do gift basket company? Cause that sounds fun. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God completely she different. To do the marketing consulting because the gift basket is too much inventory and you don't know if you're going to sell stuff, small profit margin, right? Thank God yeah. she steered me away from that. So that was the first lesson in really picking the right path 
right? But I may have picked the wrong path had I not consulted someone and invested a little bit back then. I thought it was a lot, but it was really a little compared to what I've done lately. Right. And so I, I was confident that I could go and go out and do marketing consulting for all the people I had known in the, in the previous business. And I had been networking in my local community. This was back before social media, you guys. So, I mean, you just go out networking. And I was in, you know, so when I was in advertising, I was in four chambers of commerce and I would learn, go to all the chambers of commerce and meet everybody. And I was an ambassador at all of them. I was also in a women's group and a BNI group. And so I was a networking fool, like fanatic. And yeah. I was really good at follow-up. So I just jumped in and started networking and following up and I got some clients and it wasn't, it, it was still a roller coaster of cash flow, but I felt pretty confident when I left that job that I could go do that and create that. Yeah. Oh, amazing. So um, you kind of planned a little bit that you were leaving and, and you knew that you were going to start your own business then. Yeah. I didn't have anything set up. I didn't have any oh, corporation. Okay. That's what I, was I didn't have a website. I didn't have business cards. I just went networking because when you meet people and they like trust and connect with you, they don't care about a lot of that stuff yet. Yeah. Right. And so it, they, I love that you relationships. Said that. I yes. love that you so said that. Too many people try to do all that stuff first. Oh, I got to get an LLC before I do anything. Stop it. No, yeah. you don't. I didn't yeah. get a corporation until six years into my business. And when it was more, made more sense for tax purposes, right? You don't yeah. need that. You actually don't need a business uh, license in your town yet. I mean, you can get it, but you don't need to do all this stuff. Like yeah. just, you just need a client to pay you. So you have more confident confidence and then go get another client, go get another client. And then, and then take some time to build the foundation. You know, it's a little different in today's world, however, because People are networking online and in order to check you out more, they need to go to a website. So my advice yeah. is a little bit different these days, but back then that's what I did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, I have to say that sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm the brand person, but I'm the one telling you to stop working on your logos and stop working on your, you know, making everything beautiful until you get out there and start talking to people and actually seeing what they need. And that's you know, actually very uh, good advice because I sometimes clash with a lot of branding people. I don't think, I mean, I think we have the same mindset around this because they want you to be perfect out the gate. And I'm like, no, I think you should be messy out the gate. And I yeah. think your brand sometimes, sometimes doesn't come for a year after you're doing yeah. the business because you're yeah. going to evolve what you're selling, what you're doing, how you're helping people, how you're working and your thought process. And once you get involved with a bunch of other entrepreneurs, you get new ideas and bigger ideas. And sometimes people change completely, change courses exactly. on what they do. If you spend five or $10,000 on branding up front, then you're going to spend it again to rebrand yeah. in a yeah. year. So just and there's a lot careful. of things that you can just have, you know, something, do something quick. So people, it's not as yeah. if they wouldn't notice you and you can make a quick website. You can, you know, even yeah. a page. So you can, although I think you need more than a page. I'm very, I'm very, um, <laughs> uh, do, using your website as the hub of your business is critical these days. Yeah. So like I was just looking at a client or a, one of my client's clients websites yesterday, cause we were on a call and she was trying to get advice on how to help him, frankly. And I was like, well, he has a one page website and there's nothing really, it doesn't even show the picture of his book and it doesn't do this and it doesn't do that. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. He needs yeah. help. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> he's, he and has so, assets already and he's not uh, taking advantage. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Hmm. so let's talk about things that you made mistakes at when hmm. you started in your early stages. What were things that, you know, you would, if, you knew now would have avoided back then. Yeah, I have a laundry list. Let me say, I tried <laughs> to block them out, but um, <laughs> let's see, being too stubborn to take other people's advice. I was very stubborn for many years. Don't do that. Like really yeah. learn, learn what you need yeah. to learn from other people. And so I was stubborn. I thought I could figure it out because I was smart. I had a marketing and business degree and I'm like, I can figure this out, you know, or I know what I'm doing. 
And yeah. I can only get so far with my own knowledge. You just don't know what you don't know, right? So that held me back a lot, uh, my own ego. Ugh, I hate it, my <laughs> ego. Like sometimes I'm just like, why did I do that? But it's my journey. I had to learn that lesson so I could teach it, right? <laughs> well, Katrina, let's, let's face it, that we both came from corporate. And uh -huh. my, one of my biggest mistakes was not letting it, I was always trying to hide the fact that I wasn't perfect or things weren't going really well because you know, you wanted to put on this facade because you were supposed to be so successful, uh -huh. um, you know, and so then you're so afraid to let anybody know that you need help and put up your hand, you know, oh, yeah. please, please help me. <laughs> yeah, it's that being vulnerable, right, that they, yeah, it's, I didn't think I should be vulnerable back then. I wasn't as open of an open book as I am today. Like if, yeah. you know, I was at a networking event people be like, and I wasn't really feeling all that great or confident or happy <clears throat> I would fake it how are you doing Katrina I'm great everything's great yeah and yes, then I would exactly. just go home and cry right yes. because <laughs> instead of saying well it's not that great right now I'm like and maybe get a good ear to listen someone to listen to me right and so now it's I have certain groups of women entrepreneurs where I can go say I'm not having a great day, you know, like yeah. luckily yeah. I don't have too many of those anymore because I've gotten over uh, and through a lot of my head trash, but that head trash, it comes with you. Like it, we all have it. You have something, yeah. you have something that is, that is blocking you from getting to that next stage or doing that next thing or being bigger or getting more exposure or raising your rates. You know, there's something yeah. blocking you somehow, some way and it. I've been doing this for 20 years and there's still stuff that comes up, right? <laughs> well, and let's talk a little bit about that. Like, so what were some of the things that, you know, you were telling your, or you felt, or you believed that you had to overcome? Cause I know that I had a ton of them too. Um, comparing myself to others was huge, you know, and it was stupid too. Cause I compared myself to someone who'd been in business for five or 10 years and I was just brand new. And I'm like, that's just stupid. You don't do that. It's like apples to oranges, right? Yeah. So, but nonetheless, it's there. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> they'd be like, well, how come she's getting all these kinds of people to come to her workshop? Or how come she's making this money? And I'm like, because they've been doing it longer. They have more people following, right? So yeah. Um, I did I did compare myself, and that's still one of my biggest sticking points sometimes, uh, frankly. And um, let's see. Oh, when, I, when I started my business, I was married to my starter husband. I call him, <laughs> right? <laughs> he was a great guy. But once I started my business, it changed our relationship because all of a sudden I was in risky cash flow, right? I was in, yeah, I was in that roller coaster of cash flow, and he was more of a stable security kind of guy. There's two different mindsets, right? There's the sure. you know, employee mindset that's stable paycheck and then there's the entrepreneur we're going to take risks and oh well we're going to charge stuff because it'll all work out in the end kind of mindset right yeah <laughs> and so as soon as i started my business boop, we had two different mindsets all of a sudden <laughs> yeah and i kept growing mine because i was listening to all these entrepreneurs and i'm like oh well, i have to go to this workshop and it's three thousand plus travel and then i have to get this website and then i have to do this and i have to hire this person and he's like oh no you yeah. don't we don't have any money for that right <laughs> and i'm like well yes i do or i'm not going to learn the things i need to know i don't know what i don't know and he's like yeah no you don't and so that i see that all the time now with right. other yeah. entrepreneurs and this is one of the biggest things i think entrepreneurs have to get get through is that communication <clears throat> with a significant other and yeah and having them be your true cheerleader and making sure you're with the right person and so that my starter husband was not willing to learn and understand more about what i wanted and my change of my dreams and desires and stuff and so he you know i i went two years with being unhappily supported not supported and so it was like the fake it kind of thing in the networking oh yeah i'm great and then i would cry myself to sleep so i was quote unquote settling for someone who wasn't supportive of me and so oh, i did leave yeah. that marriage and two years into my business i left the marriage because we weren't gonna see eye to eye we tried and yeah great guy right and I leapt out into my own self, taking care of myself, 
uh, bought a new house, frankly, and was still paying for the other house. And I still didn't have consistent revenue, but I had faith. So having yeah. the faith was what took me on all the leaps that I made throughout the years is having faith that I knew that I could figure it out, that I knew it would all work out somehow, some way, that I was smart and people needed me. And having that faith and belief in myself was the driving force for everything in my business. But I didn't know it at the time. That's what I was doing, yeah. right? You had to look yeah. back. I had to look back eight, eight, nine years ago later and go, oh, I had faith and belief. I didn't think in the moment, oh, I have faith in myself. I can go do this. I just did it because of the inner knowing. Well, that is so, so interesting because you think about it too. Um, a lot of the people, uh, especially in this group, are people that have been in corporate and they've had steady paychecks and, you know, and some of them are not wanting, like, that's one of the things that holds them back from leaving because they, they're not sure how they're, or they may not believe that they can actually make money doing what they want to do um or they haven't figured it out yet or they've jumped and that this was me is it, the roller coaster started to hit and i didn't know how to handle it because i i hadn't figured out how to get you know business into the pipeline or mm -hmm. leads into the pipeline because i was just focused on doing taking care of the clients that i had you know yeah. so oh it was a terrible up and down um, i know it yeah. can be really bad if you don't have people on your side to help you through that, right? Yeah. To guide you and say, don't worry about this, do this. Don't, don't listen to that. Or, you know, like uh, I have a sign that I use in a lot of my coaching calls. It's just like, stop it. <laughs> 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 stop bringing that up. Stop the excuses. Stop that way of thinking and let's move on. Right. And yeah. I know that's not the best I mindset love that. advice. <laughs> it's no, not but the sometimes most it's like smack, smack. <laughs> Wake up. Right. <laughs> I mean, do you want the result or not? So you got to yeah. at some point let certain things go to move on to the next thing. And, uh, you know, having I didn't hire another business coach for three years into my business because I was doing really well networking and, you know, getting clients. But I only made it up to about 70,000 a year doing that myself. And I'm yeah. thinking, well, that's good, but I'm working and doing all this for other people, I still don't have, you know, a quote unquote, a life. Um, and so something had to change. And one of my friends invited me to this workshop. I'd never, you know, gone to an entrepreneur workshop and it was in LA down, you know, plane flight away. Yeah. And it was $3,000. And I'm like, well, I don't have $3,000, but I figured out how to move money on some credit cards and pay for it. So I could go. And um, it was at the you know, I couldn't, it was barely making it. I was going on faith that they're going to tell me exactly what I need to know so that I could change the business model. And, and it did, it totally changed because I met 200 people at least that were making much bigger money. They were doing this coaching stuff and they were doing calls and they were 500 an hour. And I'm like, oh my God, I can't even imagine charging 500 an hour. Right. And there was people charging a hundred thousand dollars for the year. And I'm like, what? what are they doing? Like how? And so then I would like, well, I can do that. I'm better at that than they are clearly. And I could do, you know, so I was yeah. really getting validation that, oh, there's more, they're getting paid. That means there's people that will pay that. That means, so it upped my confidence and belief in what was possible. If you yeah. don't surround yourselves with people that are doing bigger things and at bigger rates, and you really immerse yourselves in those, in those groups of people, then you're just not going to believe you're not going to know what's possible. You need to be shown what's possible. These ideas yeah. of membership programs and high end masterminds and live events and retreats and this and that, those ideas don't just come into your head of how to do it, how to price it, how to sell it, unless you see it and talk to people about it. So yeah. I, that's the number one thing that has catapulted me throughout the last 20 years is going to workshops and hiring mentors and staying in that conversation with those other bigger entrepreneur thinkers and getting rid of the the naysayers in my life frankly yeah 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 it really helps to find that community um, of people that are doing things um, similar to you I think you know because if you've been living in a world where everybody does it you know the way you used to do things, it's it's really hard 
as you said, to see the possibilities. Um, You'll stay. So are you, are you um, still a, a, you know, if you were telling somebody who was starting out, would you say that networking is uh, one of the biggest things? Tell me, like we sort of chatted about that and you have some thoughts. Well, there's, um, there's a lot of ways to grow your business these days, right? I mean, granted, the social media world is insane how much mm-hmm. that is out there and how many billions of people are on social media. But what I've been thinking, especially during COVID, and what I've proven is that you can build a business with the activities, the marketing activities that you like to do. You don't have to do the ones you don't like to do. Frankly, I don't care who's telling you, you have to do this. You have to be on this platform. You have to do it three times a week. You have to do blah, blah, blah. You don't. There's so many, there's 20 or something different marketing strategies that I teach in workshops. And you can pick one or two these days. Now you can't put all your eggs in one basket and then not do it well. Okay. You have to learn and immerse yourself in the training to do something well. Like if you want to become a speaker, Uh, And whether it's speaking on podcasts like this or on Facebook lives or just doing videos yourself or speaking on stages, I've spoken on stages up to 3000 people in the room. If you want to be a speaker and you love that, then you need to hire trainers to teach you how to be a better speaker, how to sell from stage, how to, you know, do the, all the things that are going to make people want what you've got. If you don't learn that, say you're a speaker in corporate, that's not the same. You have to learn how to do it for an entrepreneur. And I don't care, even if you have, even if you did it in corporate and you still want to now teach to corporate and as a consultant, you still need to learn what to do differently because it's different. So you need to train on that. Now, if you want to be networking, like I love networking, I'm a huge networker, but I'm also an extrovert, right? But it's funny because I'm kind of an ambivert, like in places where I don't know a lot of people. I will be an introvert (laughs) Yeah, unless I'm the speaker, then I'm an extrovert. But if I'm an (laughs) attendee at something, I'll just kind of walk around and just talk to people. You know, I'm not going to be this "Ah," person. Yeah. Yeah. But so networking and speaking, I say is, is one lane, either you love it or you're not so excited about it. Mm -hmm. There's social media is the same kind of thing. It's a different lane. It's Either you love doing social media and writing posts and getting comments and getting those kudos and putting pictures out and really engaging Mm -hmm. with your followers, or you're like not so excited about it. So I say these days you pick a lane. You're either the speaker networking lane or you're the social media lane. That doesn't mean on social media, don't do videos. Of course you would. Um, And it doesn't mean you're not connecting. You are. And it doesn't mean on speaking a networking lane that you never do social. Of course, you have to look really good out there on social and have lots of followers in order to people to see you as more of an influencer. But you don't have to do 100% of both these days is what I'm trying to say. You can do 80% of the one you love and 20% of the one you don't love. I like that. If you do it right. If you do it well, right? Yeah. So lots of different methods. Um, and I think I love, I love the point that you say, like sort of pick a lane. Um, but that doesn't mean you have to completely avoid, like if you were doing, if you're like really big high end social media, chances are you, if you're doing well and people are starting to get to know you, they're going to start to ask you to do things like podcast or come on and and have an interview with them. Um, so you can't avoid that altogether I wouldn't I, avoid it you yeah. can avoid it no. but I wouldn't avoid it yes. yeah it's such a great opportunity but such someone who picks social media as their lane you're going to spend two hours a day on social media because that's where you're engaging with all your followers your group your uh, influencers your joint venture specialists you're going to pull them off you're going to make you know you're going to do things you're going to do lives and challenges and all this stuff right yeah the last thing I want to do is a five-day challenge like no thank you like I'll go over here and do five days of videos or like I did four free masterclasses in March and I did four free Zoom calls, different topics. I would do that all day before I did a challenge. That's too much prep on that and too many things that you have to get people to. And I'm like, that's a headache. No, thanks. So yeah, yeah. I've just learned to let certain expectations go on some things because I'm doing multiple six figures now over here in this lane. and. I still have presence over here in this lane and I do quite a bit, 
but I'm in and out quickly. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, so many great things. And I want to, like, I wanted to just touch on um, being an author. Like, that's a, sort of another marketing um, uh, tactic um, that you've used successfully in your business, obviously, because you've continued to do it. Um, that, you know, let's just talk about that <laughs> briefly. <laughs> and I know yeah. it's not brief, but. Right. I just did like two hours of training on it yesterday. So, but briefly, being an author, if you really want to be an influencer and have a big following, whether you're in this lane or that lane, it's really good to have a book. Now, when I started my business, I had no desire to write a book. I'm the speaker. I was like, I just want to talk to people. La 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 la. Right? Like, I just want to <laughs> engage with them. <laughs> I'm like, why do I want to sell a $20 book when I can sell a $200 yeah. thing, a $2,000 thing, or a $20,000 thing? Yeah. Why would I focus on a $20 book? That was my thinking when I first got into business. I'm like, no, no, don't yeah. need a book. And then once I started like that first event that I was telling you about, I'm th seeing people starting to write books and I'm like, huh. And then they're getting on stages, like at these events that I'm at, oh, they're getting on stages. And then I'm like, oh, they're getting publicity. Oh, they're in the media. Oh, they're, oh, okay. Now they're getting clients because of the book and their system is created and they have their own live event. It all revolves around that book topic. I'm like, huh, that makes sense. Using the book yeah. as a business tool and a marketing tool makes a lot of sense. And in fact, uh, like, I don't even, I probably give away more books than I sell because it's not about oh, the yeah. money for the book. It's about somebody actually reading the book. One of the verse, very first books that I wrote, which is my Love Yourself Successful book, the first edition, I have a second now. Back in 2012, I remember going to a networking event with like a hundred people. <clears throat> this gal sat next to me and I had my books on the table because you always bring your books to the networking event and stick it on the table in front of you because people buy them. So she's like, oh, your book, let me see. And she bought the book and she went home. And like two weeks later, she called me and she's like, I want to hire you to help me. So a $20 book turned into a $14,000 client with just a Amazing. little conversation because she yeah. read my story. She felt my heart. She felt the, you know, my personality come through the book. And wow, right. That's just one person in the last uh, 17 years that I've been writing books, right? 17 Amazing. years now. So three years yeah. into my business, I changed my mind around that. And then I did a couple compilations. So the first thing I did was I wrote a chapter <clears throat> in a compilation book, which is the fastest way to get published and the easiest and even the like, least costly because yeah. you're writing a chapter like I did. And then you're published with a bunch of other people. Right. So if there's a yeah. bunch of authors that wrote a chapter in a book and then everybody's promoting it, then you're in front of a whole bunch of other people's audiences. So it's a really good way to get started writing a book, especially if you're trying to build your business and get clients, write a chapter yeah. so you don't have to take the time to write the whole book. And then once you have more consistent cash flow, then write the whole book is what I say. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great idea because um, I started with writing my whole book and it's, it, it's a huge endeavor. Um, yeah. So the compilations are a great idea because they also help you get into the whole marketing and uh, what you do with it. Uh, yeah. You know, you're not alone. Other people are talking about it too. So yeah, great, yeah. great idea. Yeah, I know it. I know a dozen people that do compilation books every year. So if you ever yeah. want to be in one, let me know. I mean, I have one, but I have a couple clients, and they're all different themes. So depending on what you want to write, if it's your story transformational story there's books for that if it's more yeah. practical tips on what it is you teach then you know my book's a good fit for that but like just find one and get in it and yeah you're going to invest in that some people say oh you're going to charge me to write in your book I'm like yeah because it's a lot of money to create a book and a lot of time <laughs> yeah and you're getting huge exposure so it's a good visibility thing yes <laughs> yes yes yeah you don't realize it um, but it's like putting your, do your marketing dollars into a place that's going to work. Yeah. And yes, a, a wonderful thing. Anyways, I have taken up um, um, almost all of our time now, um, but I do want to make sure that we um, know how to get in touch with you. Katrina, how can people get in touch with you? Well, I'm all over Facebook. I'm all over any yeah. channel, really. But um, 
but if you want more on this kind of stuff, you can go to the website, get some free trainings on the free training page under the resources at jumpstartyourbiznow.com forward slash free trainings. There's like, and I'll put that, there. I'll put that into yeah. the comments for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I so mean, you can learn about becoming an author or a speaker or your website, what to do with that, or jumpstarting your business and your marketing, or you can come talk to me there. You know, don't be shy. Like it's silly to be shy and resistant. Just lean in and do something right. This, yeah. I'm here to help. You're here to help. We, we, yeah. you need some guidance when you're just yeah. starting out. Trust me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, and also I will um, make sure that we have the links in, as I said, in this post. Um, and Katrina has a great section of free resources. I was checking it out. Lots of things for um, everybody to uh, consume and just even get to know her a little bit more. Um, plus she has all her books. Maybe you're, you want to check out her book. Grab a so, book, yeah. Yeah, grab a book. And, you know, like I said, there's so much to help you uh, grow your business. She's got great tips, but she's so inspirational. I love her story. I love how you started. <laughs> and I am so uh, grateful for you to have joined us today and shared all of this with us. Thank you so much, Katrina. This has been a fabulous, fabulous. Um, so everybody check out uh, Katrina's jumpstartyourbiznow.com um, and, and pick up some of those free trainings and leave us a comment if you're watching this as a replay leave a comment Katrina's in the in the group and um, I know she'll uh, jump in and answer any questions you have too so thank you everyone this has been a fabulous uh, interview I've really enjoyed it and uh, I know that you're going to get lots out of it so thanks everyone have a great day Thanks.